Okay, looks like we're live. Om Lokaha Samastaha Sukin No Bhavantu. May all beings be happy and peaceful. Hi everyone, it's Phoenix. It is Monday, January 30th, 2023. Doing a quick audio check, make sure you all can hear me. Could I get some messages in the chat? Live chat. Hi, Adam. Hi, Dejan. Okay, awesome. Turns out there's just a, a few settings in the chat for YouTube Studio. I don't know why it defaults to top chat. I don't really know why they do that as opposed to actually seeing the live chat, which is the point of doing a live <clears throat> memo to YouTube. <laughs> uh, so We've got a few key events coming up this week. Before I get into that, I just want to mention that all of the the views expressed here on this channel are my own personal views. It's not meant to be taken as financial advice. These are basically, it's me thinking out loud. These are the moves that I'm planning to be making. Um, so just a gentle reminder there. <clears throat> also, if you haven't checked out my small cap superstars report, now is a good time to do that. I would say you can maximize your benefits uh, by doing your research in the next probably one to three months with small caps. And um, I'm just going to keep reminding you that uh, because I do, I do want you to make money as an investor, a lot of money, and to escape maybe the nine to five or whatever grind, whatever... Uh, conundrum you face. I know we've all had a lot of difficulties. Uh, for me personally, I've had uh, family health stuff that I've had to deal with and my own personal health actually. And so um, it's always helpful to make as much money as possible, right? <laughs> uh, the courses are available. I mentioned in a tweet just yesterday, if you're facing extreme financial hardship and you've had maybe deaths in the family, maybe you've had um, you've lost your job, maybe you're on your last leg, reach out to me, just DM me, and I will make these uh, resources available to you. Please don't try to take advantage of that offer, my generosity. Um, but there are, I know there are some of you out there who are really, really struggling. And if I can be sort of a ray of hope in that and offer my resources, it's really nothing on me. Uh, because the resources are there for perpetuity. So, um, of course, they are worth the price tag. But just just for those of you that are really, really struggling, and you know who you are. So just want to put that out there to you all. And we'll get started. So looking up ahead, uh, economic calendar, I'm using fxstreet.com. And um, I sort by high priority again, just going to remind you of that. In case you're wanting to see what's coming up, we have the FOMC policy statement and the press conference, and that's going to be Wednesday. That's 9 a.m. my time, which, what's that, 2 p.m. for most of you. Uh, if you're on the East Coast, uh, if you're in Europe, I don't know what time it is. Uh, but And then we have, uh, well, before that is the PMIs, which is significant, but not as important. Um, we're expecting a 25 basis point hike pretty much already priced in. Um, we'll probably see some whipsaw price action as we as has been the the pattern for the last several, you know, over the last year of FOMC meetings. Um, it's kind of nerve wracking because it seems like the pressure just builds to that one single moment and that either indicates a continuation or reversal. And actually, I think if you were to go back and take a look, you'd see nine times out of 10, it, well, I don't want to say nine times out of 10, but a majority of the time it indicated a reversal. And in this case, we are definitely overbought. We're in overbought territory. Now, there's this growing, this growing, what, what's the word that I'm looking for? There's this insanity on Twitter. And uh, the, bola, the bulas have gotten really uh, kind of out of control here, thinking that we're just suddenly breaking through. And I want to remind you, uh, just I'm. I feel like one of my main roles here has been to be the the voice of reason in all of this, and um, you know. And so, so I just want to remind you if you just always zoom out, and take a look on the weekly, and see, and just compare it. Compare the patterns with the price action to what we've seen in previous bear markets. Now, no two 
bear markets or bull markets are going to be precisely the same, but there are some underlying patterns and it would be highly unusual for Bitcoin to continue to push upwards considering where we are right now with the macroeconomic, the headwinds that we're facing. And we're actually about to see some, they call it the, what is it? The macro tech, the, the big tech, Google, uh, Facebook, Meta, uh, Amazon, Apple, we're going to see their earnings reports over the next week or so. And I, I'm not super optimistic about that. And I think that's going to heavily weight down the S&P 500. And so the S&P could very well have already topped out here in the short term. And what that means is that S&P goes down, crypto is definitely going down because you have to, to consider them together. We have the tech stocks, that's, that's risk on. Cryptocurrency is even more more risky than the tech. Okay. So, so it's likely going to head down a lot further and that's just my two cents. And also this is not really what you want to see. Uh, it doesn't just break out of a, a mini accumulation here after just a couple of months. That's usually not the case, uh, with Bitcoin. In if we go back to previous cycles, so you can see here in the 2018 bear market, there was this phase of sort of accumulation, but then actually another whole leg down and another phase of accumulation here. And then there was a strong break here and it managed to sustain above. Um, and then also if we go back here, we saw a much longer period and this was actually probably a healthier uh, accumulation phase for Bitcoin. And if we measure that, let's just take, let's just consider that the whole range for this accumulation was about this long here. And so if we measure that and we just take a look, we can see that that lasted for about 315 days. Okay. Now if we just compare that to what we're seeing right now, if we just, if we say, well, okay, this is the start of the accumulation here, then we're looking at 224 days. So it, it feels a little bit early. Now I, whether or not you subscribe to the Wyckoff uh, methodology, you have to admit that it's played out pretty well for most cycles in most markets. Okay. And so, um, in this case, where would we be at if we were to go off of something like this, a schematic like this? And of course they're not all going to be exactly the same. Can you all see that? Okay. Um, you know, so where would we be at? in this, in this whole scheme of things, just considering, okay, well, if this was the selling climax here, that would be the earliest that we could see the selling climax. And then would you consider these secondary tests here? Would this be the spring? It's possible that this could have been the spring. I don't want to rule out that possibility, but just the, the main thing that's really helped me as a trader and investor is I just have this ability and I don't think it's not unique to me. It's just that I sort of, I try to absorb perspectives from a lot of different people. And I tend to ignore uh, people on crypto Twitter that haven't been in the space for more than a year because they don't really understand how it works. And, and I'm just, I'm just kind of listening here and there. I'm listening to what the media is putting out, what they're pushing. I'm listening to, you know, to projections about earnings. I'm listening to, to events in cryptocurrency and all this listening I get sort of a consensus about, okay, where are we at? Is there a really positive, genuine shift in sentiment or is this manipulated? And we know that the price is always manipulated, but sometimes it's more so than others. And in this case, it doesn't feel like, does it feel to you? And of course you, you get to come to your own conclusions about this, but does it feel to you like there's a genuine shift in momentum and sentiment. We've seen the momentum. Um, and we are also seeing now on the weekly, we're seeing a deceleration in momentum. Okay. As of last week, of course it was still a green week, uh, but, but the candle was smaller, right? And that's a sign of deceleration. Um, but the sentiment, it seems out of place, doesn't it? It's a little bit out of place. And of course, a lot of people are going to be optimistic heading into the new year. It's kind of like when you set a new year's resolution. 
And like a lot of people are thinking, you know, they're on it for that first month. And then they sort of lose their uh, charisma or they lose their enthusiasm, right? And that's kind of how it feels if I look at the markets and stock market, crypto market, and also with Forex and paying close attention to the dollar index right now, we're going to look at that in a moment. But just, I always like to start my streams looking at the macro view because if you don't understand the general trend, the trend is still down, okay? Now we are, it, it, it is apparent that we have entered into a range here, but we're at the extreme of the range. Would you long into resistance? Well, any anybody with a sound mind who's actually paying attention to these charts is not going to long into resistance. If anything, you would wanna wait until it clears this 25K level and holds above, before becoming a full-on bull saying bear market's over, we're back. That would be the most the most logical thing. But most people, they don't operate using a logical framework. They're mostly fueled by their emotions. And this includes males as well as females. Males also, we operate based on our emotion and what we maybe want to happen. And you have to also understand that there's a lot of people on Twitter who don't trade, who got in in somewhere in, in this mess here, okay, they're still underwater and they're waiting to get back to break even. And so they, of course, want it to shoot back up to 30K, 40K, 50K. They want that. that so they're going to be biased in that direction. And I know that many of you who are watching the stream already understand this, but it's just good to remember. And I have to remind myself when I start to see a lot of bullish sentiment show up. And I think the fear and greed index for the first time tapped into the greed zone in, in like over a year. And that's kind of crazy because like we are technically still in a bear market. And so these bear market rallies can be vicious and they're intended to do to be that way because they need the liquidity in order to continue to take your money. And my whole objective here doing this, whether you under, understand this at this at present or not, is, is to keep you from losing money and to help you to make money. And that's always, that's been my, my sole mission when I've, when I've been sharing. Uh, and that's also why I got away from DeFi is because I realized how, just how uh, people misinterpret things and they think that just because I'm bullish one moment that it's always going to be that way. And so in this market, 2023, if you're not really careful, you could get really chopped up. It could be really difficult for a lot of people unless you're paying close attention and you know how to navigate these choppy seas. And so I'm giving you all the tools to hopefully do that. Okay, so... Um, I don't know where that came from, just sort of stream of consciousness. And we're going to look at Bitcoin, Ethereum, and we're going to look at a lot of the alts as well, because a lot of the alts are showing initial signs of weakness. This, it could be a tough pill to swallow for many, for many bulls. Um, I know a lot of you also understand that cash is a position. Sometimes it's good to just sit and wait and let the dust settle. And that's sort of what we're waiting for. We're waiting for the FOMC on Wednesday, Wednesday morning, my time. We're waiting to see, but I have a feeling that at post FOMC, there's going to be a pretty big drop. That's just my feeling. And I could be completely wrong about that. I'm just, I'm willing to share these things and I'm willing to actually share my live trades on C3. If you're not in C3, then, and you, and you want to see more of that, then you should join it. It's quite simple. And all you have to do is either buy one of my courses or just sign up for MEXC if you don't have the money to buy a course. And, and that way, you can start learning more about um, exactly where I'm entering and, and some of the reasoning behind that. I've personally, I've never actually gotten that. Uh, very few traders will reveal that information. Even the paid groups that I've been in, they don't actually share the live trades. Uh, they'll give, they might share some of them, but they're not giving, eh, some, some do, some don't, okay? But I'm doing it for free. And so, and again, it's because my intention is just to help, to be of service. And I know that that also, just by being of service, I'm trusting that I'm helping to generate more abundance for myself. And not so, but there's no real ulterior motive. Like I'm perfectly happy making money as a trader, but I don't want to see more people get wrecked here. And especially 
Like I feel a certain emotional attachment to those of you that have been stuck it through in 2022, because it's sort of like when you go through a war together, which fortunately I've never had to do that. Well, different types of wars, right? Um, but it wasn't in the military, but, or when you, when you do something that's, when you go through something that's traumatic and there's sort, sort of bonds that form. And so I feel bonds with many of the community uh, on in crypto because uh, we're all sort of in the same boat and we all got wrecked in different ways. Uh, for me, I definitely got wrecked with the whole Luna thing. Um, and some people it was FTX and some people it was just one of the lending platforms. You know, it's just like the, the list goes on and on. And so, um, again, that's just coming back to my intentions, but we'll look at Bitcoin now and see, let's pull up the levels and see what's going on. So Bitcoin, um, again, we have, we had one, two, three, four, pretty strong bullish weeks. That's actually the most that we've seen in this entire bear market. Uh, yeah, the most strength that we've seen so far in the bear market. And it came, of course, the beginning of 2023. So there's definitely reason to be suspicious here. Uh, but now we're seeing at the beginning of this week, we're a day in and we're seeing uh, some red initially. Okay, now that could reverse. But if you take a look at this daily candle, I always like to look at the size of the candles first. And I like to look at the wicks and see uh, because that gives me a picture. It paints a picture for me. And in this case, we've got about two hours until the close. And this daily candle is actually the largest red candle. If we close anywhere around here, it's actually the largest red candle that we've seen so far in, since this the, the origin of this run up. So that is, that is something to know that is significant for us. But it doesn't, it's not showing a break in market structure. It's not necessarily bearish, but it is an initial sign of weakness. And so noted, right? And so for me personally, when I see a candle like this and it closes somewhere over here, I'm thinking, and in this, in the larger context, of course, we're not in a bull market. I'm thinking probably not a good idea to long here, right? I'm not necessarily short, but it's not a good idea for me to long. And this gives me some context for the rest of the crypto sphere. So I'm thinking in terms of alts, yeah, I'm going to, I'm going to just stay on the sidelines and just watch for a little bit here because Bitcoin's showing some initial weakness. So that's my first sign. Now, if we drop down and we look on the 4H, we see we're below the weekly open. Okay. I always mark the weekly open and mine's a little shaded kind of gray color. It's 23,200 and we're below it, but now we see on this 4-H candle, it looks like it still it wants to maybe try to push back up again, okay? But if we look, this also looks a little bit like a triple tap or quadruple tap, whatever you want to call it. But you see kind of getting higher, and if you include this wick, it's getting higher, but it's not, not making big pushes up like it was previously. So a sign of potentially distribution, redistribution here. And this you could consider maybe an up thrust, although up thrusts typically happen uh, quicker. Uh, this could be one up thrust. Maybe there's another up thrust. And it looked like it was breaking out. It broke out this weekend. I actually had a nice long yesterday on Ethereum, and I'll go through that in a moment here. Um, but I, I exited that before it came down again because you should always be sus <laughs> you should always be suspect of uh, breakouts and big moves in the price on the weekends, especially in a bear market. Now, sometimes in a bull market that we'll see that, but not so much in a bear market when there's not a lot of liquidity because the retail participants are at an all-time low. And so that's why I exited that trade and it turned out it was a good, good move. Okay. But so Bitcoin, triple tap, deceleration, these last 4-H candles, this is the most red we've seen so far. Hmm. Warning signs, okay? So now what are we looking for? I'm not short yet. I'm personally looking to take a pretty big position here. This is where I will really size up and maybe scale in uh, to a larger, I like to get in at the extremes and I'm not alone in this. And of course, even if you just traded it down to, uh, to the mid range, 
uh, that would actually be probably somewhere, let's have a look and see where the mid range for this. If we're taking this larger range here, and here we could even say, because it didn't quite get up to 20, it got really close to 24K. And I said it was probably gonna go between 24, 25K. It got close to 24K. But let's just say that this is the top of the range here, 24, 3, 4, 7. And then we have the bottom here, 15, 400. If we just take the mid of that, then what we're looking at, and we're just playing probabilities as traders. And that's where, you know, you know, you start to realize like there's just a few main trades that are really the, the, the highest probability that can make you the most money. And in this case, we're really close to this extreme. I like to see it try and push up again, maybe try and get above this 23,300. Uh, maybe we get a swing fail. And in that case, one more swing fail. And I'd say it's back down to Hades from there. But the mid of this larger range is at around 19,400. And so even if you're just taking a trade down to the mid, which I think it'll probably go back down lower than that, but if the bulk of the trade is down to the mid from somewhere up here, then we're looking at, it's a 17% move. And of course, you can have a tighter stop because you know where you're wrong. You'd be wrong somewhere above this 24, 300 range. So that's why I say the higher it gets up here into this supply zone, again, this is a supply zone. Okay, this whole area in here is a supply zone. And the higher it gets up here, the higher the, the risk reward, this is when it gets worthwhile to take a trade. Now, ideally it doesn't just drop down quickly from here. Um, it sort of hovers here and struggles, makes tries to make another attempt back up again. But that's basically what I'm looking at for Bitcoin. And so I'd be looking to, the bulk of the trade would be from around 23, maybe 23.4, 23.5, somewhere up here down to 19,300. And then from there, maybe letting the rest ride and seeing what happens at around this 18,600 level. And as I mentioned, I do believe that uh, the bottom could already be in, but I also would not be surprised in the slightest if it came down below this 14, 15, 4, 15, 500, somewhere into the 14s, and then it deviated and got back inside. This would be, for me, I would be screaming, buy and go to the beach here. And I'm just gonna continue to remind you of this uh, because if this, if this happens for me, this is classic Wyckoff. And uh, we'll see, we'll see what happens there. But so that's Bitcoin. And what's gonna give us some confluence with Bitcoin is if we look at the Dixie, and we see, and we're seeing the Dixie, and it is up today, okay? And, and I identified this range here because this is a demand zone here. And you see that it is consolidating in this demand zone. So what does that mean? There's a higher probability. Of course, it consolidated here in this zone and then broke down. But demand zones stack. And so it's likely, it was likely given the context that it was going to head lower, and it did. Now, it could head even lower from here down to 199, okay? Uh, but if this breaks out to the upside, we have a clear pattern here. We know where where the momentum is likely going to shift dramatically, and that's above this 102.50, okay? And so if it breaks above, even on the 4H, and it starts to hold above here, then that's a sign. That's the major sign of confluence for crypto, because let's face it, crypto is actually paying closer attention to the Dixie than it is to the stock market. <laughs> The Dixie has a higher correlation with Bitcoin. Uh, of course, it's an inverse correlation than, than it does with the S&P 500. That's what I've seen over the last year. So if the Dixie comes back up, dollar starts to show some recovering strength, back above 102.50, forms a pattern, breaks above. That's a sign that everything's going down, not just stocks, but crypto as well. Okay, so that's the main that's the main trigger that I'm waiting for here. And as of today, it's looking like it wants to head in that direction. So we'll see over the next two days, but I think the next two days is gonna be pretty critical uh, for, for all the markets. Wow, thanks guys, I, I appreciate the kind words. I'm glad that you're making some money trading. That's nice. Um, yeah, Wonderland, 
I, I lost some money on Wonderland too, but it wasn't as significant as Luna. And I was, I know it's, it's tough with the DeFi and next time around, I'll know, I'll know better than to educate people about things they don't really know anything about. And I'm just going to basically warn them instead. And so <laughs> that's, that's sort of what I learned from the whole Wonderland thing. And I, I, I wanted it. I was one of the, the voices. I wanted it to, you know, to turn into something, uh, but you can't change a uh, leader's personality. You can't change, you know, if they show the warning signs uh, with their integrity and just Danny just didn't have it together in any sense of the word. <laughs> and like, even just the way he dressed and the way he talked, you, you, you could have seen it a mile away. Like if you want, you know, and I, you know, of course money's the numbers going up and, you know, it was a really healthy chart and it was a very strong trend and it definitely helped my channel a lot. Um, and I tried to get away from Wonderland sooner, but people kept asking me to cover it. So anyways, uh, I have no regrets with that. I learned a lot. I learned a lot of valuable lessons. And that's why I, I ended up warning people about Tomb and Harry, yeah. Uh, and I, I guess there's more coming out about him now and more antics that he's pulled. People like that just need to go to, to jail and, you know, like for life. <laughs> he's a scumbag. And like I, a year ago, I made that video warning people I pulled out. So I saved, you know, I, in some sense, some of these projects I did save, I saved myself and hopefully others. Um, but so back to, to Bitcoin. Okay. We did Bitcoin. Let's look at Ethereum now and see, uh, we're looking to see if Ethereum is also going to break down. Now, what do you notice here? I'm going to shut the window because now all of a sudden, every time I start a live stream, somebody decides to run a power tool. Ethereum also looks to be topping out in a way, doesn't it? If we look on the weekly, Ethereum has been really strong. And I, I think that Ethereum is going to outpace Bitcoin in the next bull run. And so if, if it were me, for me personally, when I do purchase spot, I'll be buying more Ethereum than Bitcoin. This whole talk about securities and Bitcoin being the only whatever, it doesn't matter. I still think Ethereum is going to outperform. Uh, and if we look at ETH BTC, that has been very telling because since May of 21, it's been consolidating. And this is actually pretty close to the top for the ETH BTC. It didn't really break down. Uh, it's been it's been consolidating. But now if we just zoom in and we take a look and see where is it today, like in the short term, what is Ethereum going to do? I think that Ethereum is probably going to head down much lower in the short term. We might see 900. We might see sub 900 for Ethereum again. Now, the reason that I say that is because if you just take a look, let's look at this on the daily so it's easier to understand but you can actually see the market structure for these trends. Okay, it's trending down. We have a series of, where's my tool? We have a series of lower highs. Okay, lower low, lower high, lower low. And then it kind of broke that structure here. Okay, it started to move back up again, move back up, and then it, and then it broke it again. Okay, well, it's still coming back up here, coming back up, coming down. So it's kind of moving in these waves, right? Where it's doing this sort of thing here, okay? And now it's been, it came all the way back down and then went all the way to the top of the range here, this monthly range. And now it's been struggling at the mid, okay? So in all likelihood, what do you think Ethereum wants to do? I think it's inevitable that at some point Ethereum is gonna come back down to this monthly level on the ETH BTC. And what that means is that Ethereum is going to fall harder and faster than Bitcoin. And it doesn't take a rocket science scientist to see this pattern playing out here. So it's tried to push up three times here and now it's struggling at the mid. So likely going to head further south now, okay? And so this gives me context and it, it gives me the context that I need to think, okay, if I were to short Bitcoin and Ethereum, which one would I want to size up more? Ethereum. Whereas if Ethereum, we're down here, 
Ethereum, once it gets back down here, what would I want along? Ethereum, okay? What would I want to be investing in spot? Ethereum. This is why I, I look at the ETH BTC chart, okay? Because it's giving relative strength. And you can do this with any altcoin against Bitcoin, um, and it, you may find it helpful, okay? But I just mainly focus on this chart. And so given that context, knowing that it's struggling at the mid and it's looking like it's we've seen this this consolidation area here and it's it's sort of matching that it looks very similar to that there's obviously going to be some resistance up here okay now we pull up the levels and we'll take a look and see what is it that we see for ethereum if we drop down again on the daily well, we had this, this also looks to be potentially the largest red candle for Ethereum that we've seen so far in this entire uptrend. And what's more, it looks a little bit like a head and shoulders, doesn't it? Okay. There's your shoulder, there's your head, there's your shoulder. Okay, possibly. But in either case, it's slowing down. The momentum is fading and it's showing initial signs of weakness. So if Ethereum comes back up to 1600, I'd be looking to, I'd be biased toward a short back down again. And you could target this mid-level and you could target here. But I'd be initially targeting down here just because, and that would be maybe one of several targets, just because a lot of the times these scalps especially in these conditions, this scalp could turn into a swing trade that lasts much longer if all of a sudden we get a big dump, market-wide dump, okay? So we'll see what happens. I'm not wanting to short this here, but if Ethereum came down here and we, get, we start to get some quick movements down here, then that would potentially be a short trigger at around 15, 1,500, okay? Um, but if it does something like this, Okay, then we're definitely going to be on the short side of things, but we want to see if it can really bounce back up again before getting in. So be careful here not to jump onto the train when you see an initial spike in one direction, because especially now that there's less liquidity in the markets, it's good to let it try and push back up again and, and give some consolidation. And if it doesn't give consolidation, you miss the move, that's fine but it's riskier when you just try and jump on and you've probably all of us as traders have probably experienced this where it's just completely reversed in a matter of 10 minutes and it's been happening more so i've been noticing it happening more in just the last month than probably in the last several months prior to that so just noticing these patterns as i as i pay close attention to these charts so those are two potential shorts for ethereum now, the reason that I longed it yesterday was because it was holding above on the 1H. You can see this diagonal here, pretty obvious diagonal, and it did hold, it broke back above this range and retested it here. This candle here retested it, okay? So we're not only above the range here, but we're also above the diagonal now. So I took a long here. And it made a quick move up, and I took profit somewhere down around 1645 uh, because I started to see it kind of whipsaw here and, and stumble. So I took profits here, and lo and behold, it came back down again. Sometimes you have to be in that snatch profits mode, and this was a Sunday move, and it did catch a lot of traders off guard here. Um, so I was fortunate enough to be on the right side of that. So Litecoin, I actually had a short yesterday. It was a beautiful short. It actually, it, it didn't play out because I, I closed it out before I went to bed, but it would have literally wicked down to my second take profit level. This was the first one somewhere in the mid here. And then the second one was actually at around 88.80. And I shorted it from up, from up here on 95.50. Um, and what led me to do that? Well, a huge overextended move to the upside and it looked like it started to struggle and look like the beginnings of a deviation. Turned out it was a deviation. Um, where did Litecoin push up to? I did say that Litecoin would probably push up uh, above 93, and it did that. We got the deviation into this zone here, uh, 
but now Litecoin is also showing some weakness. So I wanna see if it can push up one more time, but if it comes back up to this, a lot of these I'm just waiting to see. You see these two, these two pin bars here. This is not something you wanna fade, right? You wanna wait and see. And it's also kind of obeying this diagonal still. It did dip below, but now it's getting back above. So maybe it makes another attempt back up again. Anywhere above here, and I wanna, I'm gonna be paying much closer attention to Litecoin and looking for a potential short, okay? But it's, a, it's tricky to trade this not knowing the outcome of the FOMC. Of course, it kind of seems like a no-brainer to me because I don't think there's gonna be anything out, anything new. I don't think they're gonna suddenly soften and become dovish. And we already know this 25 points. So, I, I mean, it almost seems like it's the obvious thing, but you have to, you still have to be careful and wait for the confirmation. So um, another push up, I think for all the alts is definitely in the cards. Solana is also showing weakness. I had set up a short here, but I never took the short. Notice again, we have this supply zone here, which it didn't quite reach up to there, but it's just, it's slowing down, okay? There's some signs of exhaustion for Solana. There's your triple tap, one, two, three. Okay, and then we get a pattern here. Now, an aggressive trader could be looking to see here, okay, so now we have a swing low here. Now, if it breaks below this and starts to show some weakness after a triple tap, then that could be a short trigger there, okay? Down at least to here and most likely targeting much lower. Uh, but that, so that's possible. And it's possible that Litecoin, Salon, and a lot of the other alts are gonna really start to to fade before we see the big moves for Bitcoin and Ethereum. Okay, so likely going to see some boring consolidation over the next day or so. Now, Avalanche also had a huge move up because of the Amazon announcement, because of the NFTs. Avalanche, so in this sort of a situation, I don't like to, to short something that just had a lot of bullish momentum because it's likely going to see to have another violent squeeze here because the obvious play is just to short this down from right here. And it, it actually looks like if we look at this on the 1H, you could just, you could go off of just this one pattern here and you could say, well, here, let's just call this the high and this was the low and now it's breaking down below call that a retest, maybe trade it down from there. But I wouldn't be surprised to see Avalanche try and push up again and maybe come back above 21 just because of the momentum that we've seen so far. So I don't I don't like to touch the alts when they're really hot like this. And Aptos and Optimism are others. Optimism is down almost 12% today, but that doesn't mean that it couldn't try and push up again. I wouldn't be surprised if it pushed up at least maybe one more time back into this range gets everyone bullish again, and then dumps. Of course, this could have already been it. It could have already done it. Um, but it's just too hard to tell here with optimism. And so I'm not as likely to trade this, um, but I would not be looking for longs here on any of these. Aptos also looks like, notice here, okay, that's kind of interesting. I had a, a alert here for Aptos because we have this tight little range and it, it's obviously going to likely expand. And there was this uh, swing fail pattern here, pretty classic and actually crushed it all the way down to the bottom of the range. And now it broke below, we got the retest. Potent, well, not quite all the way, but close to close enough, right? Aptos could push down here pretty, pretty strong. But again, I'm not willing to short just yet. Now, if this was any other market, different context, than I would, but Aptos has been pretty irrational. So maybe Aptos also tries to push back up again over the next day or so, just gets somewhere back in this range, maybe even comes all the way back to the top. Now there, I'd be looking to short it, okay? But I wanna see before I take any trades on these. Uh, Sand is down 11% today. And I was calling this out the other day, head and shoulders, but now notice what Sand did. I had a trade on Sand this weekend I don't remember when it was, but I got stopped out on it. It wasn't a big trade, but uh, it it pushed up above this level here uh, and then crushed back, <laughs> crushed down again. So 
It could be that sand, but sand, where would I be looking to short this? I, I probably wouldn't trade this just because I don't like the choppiness in here. If it got back up to this level here, this 0 0.7787, then maybe. I don't know that it will though. I don't think that it will. Maybe it comes back up and I have an alert set here. This is 0.74. Maybe it does that and then, but then it's just, it's just too choppy right now for me. Um, maybe it breaks down here and then just continues to show weakness. That could also be a short trigger somewhere below 0.68. But I, I think sand is definitely, I think it's seen its, I think it's seen its day here. And this looks like a sort of a dead cat bounce for sand. I wouldn't, definitely wouldn't be longing this. It's just, yeah, it just doesn't make sense to me. Uh, BNB is above, it's above this, this range here. And it's, it's consolidating, chopping around. Uh, no clarity on this really. I wouldn't trade this. I don't, I'm not interested in this. If it got up to here, 337, which I don't think it will, uh, then maybe I'd short it down, but I don't, it's kind of, yeah, it's kind of in no man's land for me. And Matic had a really strong, another, I mentioned that it could probably, it would probably do something like this. Um, and it got all the way back up. Kind of notice the similarities here how you see this double top, very extreme, very erratic, and then crushed down, but then pushed all the way back up again uh, to, to this resistance level here. Now, could it repeat that? Very likely. I mean, it's just double topped here on the 4H. Now could, I mean, could go back up again though, and we see a triple top. It's just not very predictable to me. It could also just crush down here and then shoot all the way back up like it did last time and then crush down again. I just, I don't like it. It's too much of a roller coaster for me. Uh, I liked it when it was contained. It's not contained anymore. So I'm open to, to take a look. It's been about, how long has it been? Where can I see the length of my stream? They should have that somewhere on here. Oh, 42 minutes, okay. So. Yeah, I'm open to take a look. I'm not really wanting to cover any of the exotic alts because I just think that they've seen they've seen their their day and I don't want to give any I don't want to mislead anyone. Um just be careful with the alts. <laughs> just be careful with those alts. XRP I hmm yeah, I mean, it did push back to the mid here. It didn't really break out. Not really a trade worthy for me, but if it did push back up to 0.416, then maybe I'd be looking to trade it down. I don't really like to trade XRP most of the time. I don't even know why I have it on this list, to be honest with you. Um, so Adam, actually, you know what? Let's just remove that. I'm gonna take it off this list here because I'm not interested. And I'm going to take Matic off too. Now, the reason that I do this, I shift them around so that I just don't have to see all the charts. If I'm not interested in taking in trading something, then why should I even have it in my periphery here? It doesn't really make sense, right? Um, and Adam also looks toppy, right? This looks pretty toppy. It doesn't, you don't have to really think too hard about this. It, it it's at a it's at a clear level of resistance. It's actually surprising that it was able to push back up this far, um, but we see we have a pattern here that we can work with, at least with Adam. Uh, but then there's all this chop in here, so I don't know. I mean, it, you could wait until aggressive entry would be. I mean, there's there's up here, right? If it can get back up there, might. I mean, at this rate, it's been doing that all day for the last couple of days could come back down from here, break down from 1280, 1288, um, a conservative entry would actually be down 1233 below there. That's where I'd probably be more interested because it's cleared all of this crap. It's gotten out of there. It's gotten out of the mess there. And there's just kind of like, the, it could be a quick move down, back down at minimum to this weekly level at 1057 for Adam. So I'm going to keep that on the radar. Link is also really choppy, uh, but also looks pretty toppy. 
so there's your triple top, same sort of pattern that's forming. They look different, but they're, they're similar, right? Um, I'm not really interested in trading this. As a matter of fact, I think I'm just gonna, yeah, I'm gonna remove this from this list as well. And BNB, I'm just gonna remove because I don't, yeah, I don't wanna trade this here. But you notice I'm just, I'm calling out what's, what's doesn't matter. I also trade stocks, so I just try and keep my focus really uh, narrow. And like, if I size up on Bitcoin, you know, my rule is I try not to have more than 5% maximum at risk at any given time. And that's only when I have high conviction. Usually it's more like one to maybe 2% um, when it comes to crypto. And of that 5%, I might have like 3% in Ethereum, 2% in Bitcoin. I might have like a half percent in Solana or Litecoin, you know, and of course the, the alts can move faster, but they're also can move against you faster. So, you know, the more, the more you trade, the more you start to find that, that rhythm and you find that balance among the different, uh, the altcoins versus the majors, the blue chips. Aptos had a hackathon, huh? Did I say I was going to look at Canto? I will, okay, I'll look at Canto. And then I don't know if I'm going to look at any of the other alts. It's on MEXC. It's not on any major exchanges. So that's the first thing I'm looking at. That's the first strike against Canto. It's strong. It's strong here. But look at this range. Wow, that's pretty... I wouldn't long this, but I would be looking to short it. It's right. There's your, there's your range on the weekly. Okay. And then we'll just identify the mid and we'll see, we'll see if it can, I mean, again, the macro context is my view on this, my interpretation is that we're headed down. And so if that's the case and alts have run their course and it, do you see these wicks here on the daily? You see all these wicks? It's tried to push up several times now after a big strong move. I don't know why it did this, but now if we get back inside, we get a daily close back below this level here, 0.385. You could, I mean, conservatively, dropping down to the 4H, we could, you could say, well, okay, so now we have another range here, and let's just call this the low of that, and I'm just gonna change the color on that. And then we could say that this is the high, this area in here, okay? And so conservative entry would be if it breaks down, we know now we're below this weekly and it breaks down, it starts to come down here and then it breaks down from there. There's your short trigger on that. And if you zoom out, you see it still has a long way to fall there back down to the mid. So I would be looking to maybe trade it down to the mid. So, I mean, that's a 33% move there for Canto. But this just looks like a big range to me. And I just, I would be very careful to take a long on this, considering these, this is what I would, this is what you would term a bearish, uh, bearish pressure. When you see more than three wicks in a row like this, the very long wicks at that, and the volume sort of topped off here with this doji candle, I think it's headed down. You know, you can see in the, the stock, it just looks like it's, Looks like it's headed down to me. So yeah, I'm sorry to hear you all got wrecked in different ways, but yeah, I mean, we're all still here and um, we'll look back on this 2024 probably and laugh or at least smile maybe. <laughs> I'm already doing it. And that I think that helps you 
to really recover from your losses quicker. I mean, I lost more money in 2022 than I've ever lost in any other year as an investor. And I've been doing this for a while. So if that gives you any consolation, uh, but I've also, I've been making it back. So, and I'm confident that, Hey, if I can 10 X 20 X, my portfolio, I can do it again, you know? And so that's the kind of mindset or, you know, every time I've taken a loss, I think, well, imagine if I had 10 times that amount of money and I was, and I made a similar mistake to that because one day I will. And that's how I see it. It's just, it's just tuition. And you've all, everybody has to, you know, I mean, most people blow up two to three accounts before they really find their groove. And most people don't stick it out past one, but I'm not saying that it has to happen that way, especially for those of you that are more astute and you're just paying closer attention, but it's just something to keep in mind. So, uh, I don't really have any other requests here, comments. Um, uh, hopefully the Canto was helpful. Shizzy, I'm not sure what your, what your bias is on that. Uh, Bitcoin is doing its thing. It's doing what we, what we expect it to right now. Um, it looks like it is wanting to try to push back up again to this weekly. Let's see if it can push back up to 23,200. That's the weekly open. And if it starts to show weakness there, I might preemptively, I might start to scale into a short. <laughs> when I say scale in, that's like maybe a third of the size that I would, that I would normally do. And then if you're only in a third and then it does happen to run up back up to 24 K or something like that, maybe even 24, 300, well then you add, right. And then you're two thirds in. And I, you know, if you've, I think it's okay to average down if you've planned that as part of your trade, but if you haven't planned it as part of your trade, don't do it because it can get you into a lot of trouble. But in this case, if you're in here and then it starts to really crater before FOMC and you, then at least you've got some skin in the game, right? And especially when you're setting up for the positional plays, like I just shorted, uh, I put some pretty significant shorts in the stock market, including the S&P because, but I'm still planning to add to those. And so I didn't take, I didn't go all in, I'm scaling in and I'll exit if I'm wrong and it won't be as much of a loss as if I just went all in, right? Looking at the right moment to buy. Well, keep watching my keep watching my channel. There's a couple hundred of you that are consistently watching this channel right now. And I'm just telling you, I'm, it's just amazing. Even some of my close friends, um, think that they know better than me and it's fine if they, I mean, they're welcome to do what they want, but I literally tell them, I'm like, I'm spending many hours a day looking at charts and this is what I do for a living. So I, I mean, you can trust me because I'm going to tell you, I'm going to be pretty vocal when I'm buying. I'm going to be vocal. I'm going to tell you, and I'll tell you what I'm buying too. If you're listening to the live streams, I might start doing less live streams, doing maybe one a week, just because it's, I don't know, we'll see what's most, what's most helpful, but no, I'm not buying here. I bought Bitcoin at 16, 16, around 16, eight, and then I ended up selling it a little early. I made some profits still, but I'll probably buy again when it goes back down there again. Um, but will I go all in? Well, if I see that deviation that I was mentioning, then I might put a much larger chunk in, but that's the smart money mindset is, well, let it come down again. Let it bounce back down again, test down here, not once, but maybe a couple of times. And then if you just get, if you get maybe a third in here and a third in here and a third in here, then you've averaged in somewhere around 20, 20 K or, you know, something like that. And then while, when I say, Hey, I'm buying Bitcoin, when I say, Hey, I'm buying Ethereum. Well, what does that mean for the other alts? It means, okay, Matic, probably a good time to buy uh, avalanche. Good time to buy because what do they do? They follow one another pretty closely. But I'm also, I want to be crystal clear that we could see what we saw back in 2019. Do you remember this, where this broke out from in this, this was a perfect entry here, right? 5k, but we still revisited that and actually went below it 
in COVID. Now, given this was a black swan event, but that's not off the table considering the powers that be in their manipulative, uh, their, you know, scheming diabolical plans for humanity. <laughs> Would you really put it out of the question that they do something like this again? No. And that's why I'm saying be prepared, not just to, you know, to accumulate, but also to sell some of that off if it does do something like this, because then you still have some dry powder. I think cash as a position is a really good idea in general in 2023. I definitely wouldn't go all in. Or if I did, it would, wouldn't be for very long. It would be just to catch a wave up and then maybe take some off. Cash is always a position. So I'm just going just gonna to remind you that. I'm going to hammer that point home. Yeah, AVAX, I think, is on its way down. I wouldn't buy AVAX here. Definitely wouldn't buy AVAX here. I'm not buying any of these here. Just again, just to be crystal clear with you all. Yeah. Yeah, so that's all I've got for you guys today. It's been about an hour. I'm trying to keep it keep it down. And it's funny because YouTube, I think they kind of penalize you for not having high retention. And, and so my retention on the lives is kind of, you know, it's like people will hop on, hop off. And that's great, but you're missing a lot of a lot of what I'm sharing, a lot of information. Those of you that, that stuck it out through this live stream, thank you for... Uh, bearing with me. I'm trying to give as much value as I can. Again, you can support me just by signing up with Mexi. Um, you can find the link on my Twitter profile. You can find the link on my website. You can also purchase my courses. I'm just putting it towards uh, bills. I'm putting it towards trading. Um, it does help me. It's not the main bulk of my income, obviously. <laughs> That's the way it goes. Uh, but yeah, so I'm going to just, I'm going to hop off here. Thanks everyone. Have a beautiful day.